Hello and welcome to the Broncast, the official and brand new Cal Poly Pomona Athletics podcast. I'm Tyler Loby, the Assistant Athletics Director for Communications at CPP, and I'm so excited to bring you this new podcast as we begin the 2020-21 academic year. Each week, I'll bring in your favorite Broncos coaches, student athletes, department staff members, and even some outside guests to talk anything from sports, academics, life in general, and issues facing our world today. Most importantly, I hope to have a little bit of fun with this, so tune in each week for new episodes of The Broncast. The first ever podcast features members of the CPP women's soccer team. I sit down with head coach Jay Mason, senior forward Taylor Scott, and junior goalkeeper Sydney Williams to talk about last year's success, the unprecedented times we are in today, followed by some classic rapid-fire questions to wrap it all up. Let's get right to it. The first episode of the Broncast. Enjoy. All right, welcome. I have head coach Jay Mason, senior Taylor Scott, and junior Sydney Williams of the women's soccer team. Thanks for being with me this morning. We're first excited. off... First off, I want to uh, have you guys introduce yourselves. Obviously, I just said your names, but um, Jay, if you want to uh, let us know uh, how long you've been at Cal Poly Pomona and uh, maybe your hometown and what, uh, uh, what brought you to Cal Poly Pomona, your, your career path. Uh, yeah, it's my, well, heading into my fifth season with, uh, with the Broncos and I came uh, via Austin, Texas, which I spent a great deal of time there in Texas. Um, you know, my, my path to Pomona, it's funny. I always give, a, I won't say the name, one of our athletic directors a hard time because the job had come up the year before and I had applied for it. And she said I, I didn't apply for it. So when it eventually got me on campus, um, I mean, it's, it's one of the top schools, not just in the, the West Coast. I think it's one of the top schools in the country, I think the conference itself is the number one conference at the Division II level in the country. And I wanted to be, want to be a part of a department that culturally is successful. And you know, the staff and, and the other student athletes, it's just an environment I wanted to be in. So I was fortunate enough that uh, I got that opportunity. Um, and yeah, I came uh, all the way from uh, Vineland, Ontario, which no one probably knows where that is. I usually say Niagara Falls or Toronto, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, East Coast, Great Lakes, that's my story. Hi, I'm Taylor. Uh, my year, I'm a senior, um, and then my hometown, I'm from Santa Clarita, I, where I, I tell everyone it's where Six Flags Magic Mountain is. Um, and then um, I'm majoring in liberal studies, and then after graduation, I want to go and try play professionally somewhere. So... See what happens with that. Okay, he will. <laughs> and Sydney. Um. Yeah. So I'm Sydney. I'm from Inglewood, California. I'm like down the street from uh from SoFi Stadium. It's getting built up. Um. I'm a third year kinesiology major, and for after college, still trying to figure that out. But um. I have an internship that does like biomechanical analysis uh, that helps like patients assess injuries and I'm really liking that. So possibly gonna, gonna look for something in that field after college. Great, wonderful. All right, well, let's get into it. Um, last season, um, you had an incredible season, 13 wins um, and, and you know, it, as opposed to what you guys did in 2018, um, where you had just five wins, you turned around, had eight, uh, you know, eight more wins. Um, how do you, how do you explain that turnaround between a five win season and a 13 win season? And, and what was the difference? Uh, Coach Mason, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, you know what? It's, it's, we get these, we got those questions a lot, you know, as the season was going on, I get calls uh, from different coaches, just, you know, obviously giving us a lot of praise for the way the team was playing, but it relatively the same group of people. I, I just think we uh, were a little bit younger in, in 2018 and we were unfortunate with some injuries. I don't think a lot of people understand, like we started with the same record as we did in 2019. And, you know, we, we work really hard on scheduling the toughest schedule we can 
possibly find. And I think, you know, the girls started well in 2018. We had some injuries and, um, you know, soccer is one of those cruel sports. I thought the girls played fairly well. I mean, most games we dominated for the most part. Uh, we just couldn't find the back of the net and it's hard to win games when you can't, can't score goals. So, and you know, 2019, I think the girls came back in January just with, uh, basically in a, an attitude like that's never going to happen again, you know, and they're really determined their work great. I think, you know, our staff's very fortunate that we have a group of girls that we don't have to address their energy or their passion. Um, every day. It's just so much fun to be out there with them. And I think they feed off of each other. Um, and the last thing for us, I think the so first year it was all of our players. And I think we're very intentional about who we bring in as far as not just their ability, but their mindset and how the dynamic fits within the team. And, um, you know, I credit my staff to, to finding a lot of those players as well. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I think the girls found some confidence and I think, you know, for any of us, no matter what we're doing, confidence is the biggest accelerator of your development because you take chances. And I think the girls grew a lot this past year. And now it's going to be a little different challenge next time we step on the field because I think people are going to look at us a little differently. Uh, so the challenge is going to be different. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm more than excited to see them, how they uh, accept that challenge. Taylor and Sydney, same question for you. What was the biggest difference for you guys from – 2018 to 2019. Taylor, I'll start with you. Um, I think the biggest difference was our team chemistry. We did like, like in our 2019 season, we did a lot of like team bonding and like exercises to like help, like you said, build our confidence. And I just think that was like one of the main reasons. And then like whenever we would have like, I wouldn't say like problems, but like issue I don't know how to explain it but like and like something would like be wrong we would always like fix it right away we wouldn't let it like carry on and like keep like growing and getting worse so I think that was one of the other like major things that helped us Sydney um yeah pretty much the exact same thing like what Jay and Will Taylor said um I think the most the thing that I noticed the most was the switch in mindset um especially since we did mostly like everyone from the 2018 season, the majority of the people who played, played again in the 2019 season. And I think we all like had an understanding that we're not going to go through this again because that did not feel great to only, uh, to only win five games, you know? And yeah, like our team chemistry also switched up. I think um, our leaders and even our team, we really try like to uh, go out of our way to make sure that we're bonding, like whether it's the whole team or whether it's just like a group of seniors hanging out with the freshmen for a day or something. Like we went out of our way to make sure that we're all like trying to stay connected with one another. Taylor, 12 goals last season, 29 points. They both led the CCA. Uh, it was the most goals scored by anyone in a single season uh, since Hall of Famer Ruth Van Talant uh, did it in 2000. Um, and I overheard someone call you a walking goal machine last year. I, I don't know if it was your coach or if it was, uh, I think it was Chase Sanders even that said that. Um, oh, Chase. Oh, yeah. uh, speak of the success that you had last season. Um, I think because I had gotten hurt in my 2018 season, so I was out for like, I got hurt the first conference game. So I think it was more of just like, I was like fired up and like, just wanted to go out there and do like the best I could. And like, I trained like as hard as I could. And I like tried to, I don't know. I just, it was, it was a good season. <laughs> okay. And uh, I've, obviously you're, you're, I want to call her your partner in crime, Alyssa Larkin. Uh, and she led the conference with, nine assists and you know she assisted most of your goals I mean uh speak about um uh, how she kind of helped you put uh, put yourself in in a position to to be successful mm -hmm. um well she's just a great player and I think me and her just connected really well and so I'm, it's like hard to find that I think and um I don't know me and her just seemed to figure it out we would always find each other I guess well, you yeah. guys made it look beautiful. I mean, that's for sure. It's, 
it's one of those things and I'll, I'm going to go back. I think Taylor's being a little modest. She, uh, she came in, this was early in the spring and she, you know, we always ask the kids, you know, we're resetting our goals, how we're going to develop. And um, I don't know if Taylor, if you want to say exactly what you told me, but she came in and she's like, I want to be the leading scorer in the conference. I want to be all region. And, you know, I'm super proud of the fact that she dedicated herself to, to trying to achieve those things. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of sacrifice. Um, and I think she grew up a little bit too. You know, when you're hurt and you're watching, you tend to see the game a little differently, um, how players interact, you know, and I think it, uh, I think it made her, her a lot better. Uh, I think Larkin, she's one of those kids, like she, she opens a game up for a lot of players because she can beat players by herself, which I think instead of a team focusing solely on Taylor or, you know, we were fortunate. We had three girls minimum. Like we had a lot of girls that are really good in those situations, which, you know, frees them up to win the space. I think Taylor does a great job in front of goal. And that was something we were missing in 2018 when she got hurt. Um, you know, we were scoring goals before that. Not to say it's all your fault, Taylor. It's not your fault. But, uh, you know, it, take, it puts a lot of pressure on the team, right? And um, I was really proud of her that she stepped up and, and took that role. Sydney, nine shutouts last season. You broke uh, the program single season uh, goals against average record with an 0.52. Um, and you're currently on pace to break the uh, goals against average record in a career. Uh, you have 0.65 right now. Um, to what do you attribute the turnaround from you know, an okay freshman season um, to an incredibly successful sophomore season? Um, you know, in all honesty, I think I just kind of relaxed a little, which sounds a little bit contradictory to say, I'm like, well, you think if you're going to have a better season, like you're more intense, like you're more in it. I think my freshman year, I was like overcompensating, like everything, <laughs> like everything. And um, this year I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go and play. And you know what happens, happens. Like I'm going to just try to do my best to make sure that I'm doing what needs to be done for the team, you know? And I think that really helped me because I relaxed more. It helped the people who play in front of me, like, trust me um, and know that, like, hey, like, I know Sid has my back. And I know that they have my back, even though they're, like, in front of me. But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, I think I was just, like, I'm just here to play. You know, I'm not here to, like, be – extremely focused on a small mistake. I mean, you know what mistakes happen. So I think I was like, I'm just going to play this game and I'm trying my best to win. And yeah, I think that's what helped me the most this season for sure. Coach, obviously Sydney, she was a huge factor. Uh, but speak a little bit about the defense in front of her. I mean, they were very stingy as well. They, they didn't let a lot behind them. Yeah, it's – Defense is a lot of pride. Not, not a lot of people like to play defense. Everyone wants to, to score goals. So I think it was a, a complete effort. I think we, you know, our, our game model is built around how we defend and how we press. And I think the team saw in the spring how well it worked. You know, we shifted our formation a bit. So I think it, it made it a little more comfortable for the girls to, uh, to defend as a group. I mean, the back four – you know, I think they grew a lot, a lot of adversity in that first year, a lot of pressure when, you know, you're struggling to score goals. It puts a lot of pressure on, on the back line to, to be perfect. And, um, you know, that, that pressure mounts. And I think, you know, back to, to Sydney's kind of evolution, um, it's tough as a freshman to step in there. And, you know, I knew it was going to be a challenge for her. And we talked a little bit about, you know, like mistakes are going to happen and learning how to deal with those mistakes. Um, I think part of her and the way she communicates to the back line changed a lot. And I think that was more of a collaborative effort, you know, vice versa. They were able to communicate with her as well and just minimize the amount of opportunities we did give up. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had a back line with a ton of experience, um, you know, and I was super proud. We had some kids step in that had never played, you know, until, until this past season. And, you know, I think the transition when you see that with some players that step in and make it look seamless, um, that's attributed to the players around them and how they communicate, how they support each other. Um, and yeah, I'm super proud of, of Sid. And I think, 
you know, we, we changed a little bit how we trained a little bit. And, um, you know, I, I think with her, she matured. I think we have a great duo. I think Clarissa really helps out as well. She, you know, she has experience back there. And um, I was a lot of fun that I got to work with them because I miss it. I miss training goalkeepers and, you know, to get to spend some time with them. They might disagree. They might be like, you know what, it's enough, Jay. Like, we'll, we'll take somebody else today. But, uh, you know, as part of – I always looked forward to it, you know, working with them and see them find that success. And, you know, and I think with anything, whether you're scoring goals or, or protecting the goal, back line, goalkeeper, it's all confidence. And you can just see the way the team started to carry themselves. Um, we have room to grow. Don't get me wrong. We got some room to grow. But, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun training with them. All right. Well, not to rehash any bad memories, but UC San Diego conference tournament semifinal, 0 0 heading into the 109th minute. And you give up that goal that, that gives uh, UC San Diego the, uh, the advancement to the, the championship game. What, what happened there? Was there a breakdown? What, uh, and this question's for anybody. You guys um, won't? Yeah, I mean, I'll let them answer, then I'll, I'll jump in. <laughs> I mean, the amount of times I watched that goal after the game, I, I broke down every single, from, from the top to the bottom, like every single pass. Um, it was just really unlucky. That's, that's all there is to say. It was really unlucky. Um, the UCSD player got a shot, and she got a small deflection that I wasn't able to react to and ball just went in but I mean even though they got that chance like I still believe to this day that we played some of the best soccer that we have in a while like we were here to compete you know I think we played really well and then UCSC just just got a chance and yeah I mean that's all there is to it to me. Jay you, yeah Jay you told me after that game you said we just a minute thirty. We just needed to get to PKs, and we would have had them. Oh, we would have we would have smashed them in PKs. I have no doubt about that. No doubt. Now, now why know, why is that? Why why do you think that you uh, you would have smashed them in PKs? I mean, we we work on it, uh, but I, I think we we got a group of people that you know we have a number of girls that I know would step up and, and feel comfortable in that moment. Um, I believe we have one of the best goalkeepers in the region or the country. So I'm, I'm very confident in what she can do in there. So I think it puts a little more pressure on, on them to, since, you know, they're, I get it. They're the favorite. I understand that part, but I, I just feel like our girls, you could see San Diego kind of panicking a bit because I know they didn't want to. And I, and I, I'm good friends with her and Jonesy's great, you know, and I think she, she knows. And if you listen to the interview after the game, I mean, we, when we play the way this, this team can play, we are one of, I believe that we are one of the best. And I think it's back to that confidence. We got to be confident against teams like that all the time. Um, but I think it was unfortunate. I think we, we came up with some injuries late in that game that, uh, you know, and, and I believe, you know, the player that, uh, I'm sorry, the player that uh, was on the ball at the moment, I think she just cramped. It was, you know, the girls, I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything more. I mean, they bought into, we changed our formation a bit in the second half, made it really hard for a team that, that dominates teams to, to even get quality opportunities. So it was, like I said, it was an unlucky moment when the, the ball initially came in and then the deflection and it's the cruelest game in the world, Tyler. Yeah, well, that leads into my next question. College soccer has a 20 minute sudden death overtime period and in the playoffs it's probably got to be one of the most stressful 20 minutes of anybody's life at that moment I mean speak on how stressful that can be from both the offensive side of the side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball start with Taylor what do you think Taylor um I think it's just very stressful. I think um, you, like your teammates, you guys just need to find a way to like, like I remember it was the MSU game when we scored in like the last like 
10 seconds or something of the game. Um, I, like in our team huddle, we were just talking about like settling down and just like playing our game and like not like being all hectic and like passing and finding our like each other. So I think that is like one of the main things that like you have to do when, in overtime is just like calm down, find each other and just play your game. Yeah, Sydney. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to interrupt. I just feel like it's, you got to look at the game the same way, right? I mean, obviously you got to minimize some of your choices that may be a little riskier than you normally would. You know, you might play the game a little differently, maybe a little more direct to, to you know, put the onus on the other team to maybe make the first mistake. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you just got to, as Taylor said, you just got to play. You know, it's not like you're going to change everything in that second. It's not, it's not really possible. Right. And they're feeling the same thing. They're feeling the same pressure you're feeling. Right. So the team that puts more energy into just playing the way they need to play to be successful usually comes out on top. And I mean, this, we've only lost one overtime game since I took this program. And, you know, I think that speaks to the resiliency of the kids and, and how they approach those moments. The team's done a great job with that. But sorry, Sid, to interrupt. It's different for a keeper. It's got to be different from a keeper. Yeah. It's, it's a lot different from a, a keeper's perspective for sure. Um, I mean, like Taylor and, Bo and Jay both said, like, you do just have to play, but it for a goalkeeper, you want to stay like calm, cool, and collected for your team, but you also have to tell them, like, look, we only have like 30 seconds to, to figure this out or something like that. So I think for a goalkeeper, it's balancing um, times of intensity and times where you have to settle down and like reassure um, like your defensive line and then have them keep pushing the message uh, forward. But um, for like, for example, for the UCSD game, I was really just thinking, I was like, okay, we're going to go to penalty kicks. Like this, this is it. This is it. Like I just, I started getting that mindset already. But what's more stressful, the 20 minutes or the, the PK session? 20 minutes for sure. Okay. 20 minutes for sure. That's what I would have guessed. Because PKs, I mean, as a goalkeeper, there's only so much you can do. You know, you do everything you can to make sure you at least get one save. But those 20 minutes feel like forever. Sure. Now, speak of Point Loma. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm like probably – bringing up some some terrible thoughts right now but you would have opened this season on thursday against point loma the same team that you lost to in the first round of the ncaa tournament you lost to them three to one but you opened last season with a two to zero victory over them so i mean what's what it's a long season obviously but what was the difference between the the 2-0 win at the beginning of the year and the 3-1 the loss to the same team end of November. Jay? Oh, sorry. Start with, or anyway, anyone can start with that. Yeah, you know, um, Pat, you know, Point Loma had come off an extremely successful year, and, and Christy does a great job with that group. Um, you know, I thought our girls, they came out that first game with something to prove. And, I mean – there was no doubt for me in that game. We had maybe two moments where we, where they broke us down, but the rest of the game, I mean, it was, it was so much fun to watch. And I remember talking to Christy before the NCAA game and she's just like, she's like, just watching you guys. She's like, it's really hard. It's going to be really hard to break you guys down. And, and it's, Point Loma has some really talented kids, you know, and I think, you know, soccer is one of those, you only need a couple moments and, um, and, you know, I, I think for us, we had three tough weeks. I mean, we had to go up to your old stomping grounds and deal with the team who won our conference in the regular season in Sonoma and play a really difficult place. Um, and then travel back and play, you know, Cal State LA, who is undoubtedly one of the most talented teams in our conference, um, and then go and deal with UCSD. So I think, you know, we, we played three of the top teams in the region. And then, you know, you meet up Point Loma. We were pretty banged up a little bit. You know, we were, we were some girls that weren't 100%, which, again, is part of the season. Um, and I, obviously, we started well in that game. You know, we scored early. And 
Uh, to be very honest, I, I thought we should have scored probably two or three in, in that first half, and we didn't. And we, we kind of had a – the goal we gave up wasn't a good one. It was, it was a goal that we sh normally wouldn't give up, um, which kind of deflates, you know, some of that energy, I think. Um, we had a couple early chances in the second half, and when they got that early – not early, but when they got that second goal, I think it was just mentally we were we were really tired. We look, we just looked we looked tired. That's my say. Taylor, are you going to say something? Um, yeah, I was going to say that I think because we scored early on them, um, and I think we just got too comfortable, and then they scored on us, and we like kind of like started to wake back up more, and then like they just scored another one right away, and I so so I think that kind of just. I don't know, everybody kind of like gave up after that happened and like we just couldn't come back from it. Yeah, I, I'd agree with Taylor. I think after, like Jay said too, I think the first goal we were kind of like, well, this doesn't usually happen. Like, well, what are what are we doing, you know? And um, I think after they scored the second one, we got into panic mode, which then led to us kind of breaking down because when you panic, you know, your passes aren't as sharp. You don't connect as well. Like the communication drops. And I think that's how they essentially got the third goal. And like, we just started, just started breaking down after that. Yeah, All right. Mo oh, Go sorry. ahead, Jay. No, no, no. I just think, you know, it's, uh, it's our first experience in it. And for them, I mean, they had a couple years experience in those moments and I think for us it's a great learning opportunity for for our team um, to deal with that to learn how to deal with that so yeah of course the NCAA tournament since 2014 so I mean that's an incredible accomplishment in itself just to get there so um, I know I enjoyed watching you guys last season and um, and I hope that it's not much longer until we can uh, see you guys out there on the field again um, speak of that uh, starting in March when this COVID-19 pandemic started kind of affecting the rest of the sports world, um, you know, spring sports were canceled and then NBA, MLB, MLS, all those sports started canceling themselves. Um, I, I would assume that it didn't really hit you at that time. Like, Oh, that's, you know, really going to affect our fall. Uh, at what point throughout from March to now, what point did you somewhat start having some concern or realize that maybe my fall might be impacted by this? I'll let anyone start on that. Yeah, I mean, I think we were the first conference in the, in the country to, to make that decision. And, um, you know, obviously that comes down from from the higher ups and you know I, I i understand the the health and safety of it the timing of it i think was frustrating for not just our group i think most of the groups in the conference uh just because i think you know as an athlete you're trained to be resilient and optimistic and i think for us we we were at least from i'll speak for myself i was i was more along the lines of like Oh, we'll find a solution to this and we'll be okay. Um, so I, I, I know at that point it was probably really hard for the kids. And, uh, you know, once everything else started to kind of the dominoes maybe started to fall a little bit with conferences around the country uh, and within, within California, I think the reality kind of set in, you know, and I think it's difficult when you, you, you always have a path and a schedule and, you know, everything's aligned with trying to achieve something. And the reward is to get out there every day and compete, whether it's against your teammates or another group. And I think that's been the biggest challenge or maybe what's missing for all of us, just as far as even a coaching staff, I think even an athletic department. I think we thrive off of, of those moments and we thrive off of each other's successes and watching one another uh, achieve, right, and work. And so I think, I know for me, that was probably the hardest part and the timing of it for me. I'm not sure if it's the same for the kids, but uh, what do you guys think? Um, oh, you go. Okay, I'll go. For me, it really got real when um, they 
it's not just like, hey, we're going to be online completely in the fall. That's when I was like, okay. I was like, what's the worst case scenario? I was like, okay, I just can't play and I can't go to school. And, you know, that's what's happening. But I'd rather not play and do school online than, like, put myself or my teammates or, like, staff at Cal Poly um, at risk, you know, because what's going on right now, it's, it's bigger than sports, you know, and even though sports are really important and I miss soccer more than you could know, I was just like, you know what, this, it's, it's for the best, you know, it's for the better. But, yeah. yeah, I think, um, as Jay said, as one of us being, or like our conference being the first conference to like say that we weren't going to be playing in the fall, that kind of it kind of like set in a little bit there, but then like we would have meetings and like they would say like give us like a little glimpse of hope that like we could play. And then like as things went on, it was just like more conferences started like coming out saying that they weren't playing. And then like all of the major professional sports were saying that they weren't playing. So then, yeah, it was. It's your senior year, Taylor. Yeah. I mean, what it's got to be really tough for you. I mean, I assume you'll. You're going to play this spring, assuming we play games. Um, and I, I'm not, I wish I had looked this up. I knew I needed to look this up before I got on this podcast, but um, I don't think that they would charge you with an, a year of eligibility if you played in the spring. Um, and if that is the case, would you be back in the fall or are you just planning on graduating? No, I would come back. I would do a, most, a master's program if it wasn't for the fall. Good answer. I bet Jay likes that one too. Yep, I like that one a lot. Perfect. Uh, I mean, what have you guys, uh, what have you guys done to stay together to, you know, be, you know, a team still? I, you know, no one has gotten together because we can't get together. Uh, but I mean, what have you guys done to, to keep everyone engaged, keep everyone, uh, get the newcomers kind of involved in, in your team activities virtually and what what's been going on um we've just been just been trying to stay connected by just communicating like i know um over the majority of the summer and even starting up again now like we have multiple meetings a week with um our coaches and the whole team and then the coaches check up on us and then um i know our leadership group tries to make an effort to make sure that we're reaching out to people constantly, um, especially newcomers and freshmen right now, because at least I know for sure when I was a freshman, I had no idea about anything. Like I, I was clueless. And for them to be experiencing that online right now and still being expected to like know how to work Bronco Direct, like I, that, that's hard. <laughs> you know, so just trying to make sure that um, we stay reaching out. And I know um, over the summer, we did kind of like an accountability thing. Like we had a like partners for a week and we'd make sure that we're working out or just reaching out to them and you know even outside of that I know a bunch of girls are trying to like get together like virtually or just through text um, to make sure that we're holding each other accountable. Have you guys picked up any new skills like you know piano or underwater basket weaving or anything <laughs> of that nature? I started playing tennis. That was pretty fun i'm not very good at it but uh yeah that's a good sport good for your footwork i started golfing golf every week okay you and I, we gotta go out then we should go out there there's days where i feel really good and then there's days where <laughs> that's golf for you though <laughs> it humbles you. yeah it humbles you really quickly oh yeah sydney what about you um, nothing crazy. I told myself my uh, New Year's resolution was going to be to like read at least like two book two books a month because I like don't really read books often. Um, and I wasn't keeping myself accountable throughout the year, but now I, I've caught up. I've caught up. So I've just been reading a lot. I I, I guess I'm not much of a reader. I mean, other yeah, than maybe <laughs> some some sports stories or you know, this and that, but you know, when I read on, on Twitter that people have read like 50 or 60 books, just, you know, since March, it's like, how do you find that time? I don't know. That's just me. Um, I, got, I got one for you, Tyler. <laughs> I got one for you. I'm reading right now. I'll bring it to you. Okay. Sounds good. I did. Well, I, so I'm from Seattle and I'm not 
trying to make this about me, but Pete Carroll, uh, yeah. great coach, um, has a book out there that people keep telling me I need to read. And, and I just, I need to find the time to just sit down and read it. it. Might be because I have two little toddlers, you know, ages four and two, that, that probably is tough. And, you know, when they're sleeping, I want to sleep too. But uh, at some point I do need to read that book. And whatever book you got, I'll try and read it. Yeah, the Pete Carroll one's good. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, it's a good one. The one okay. I'm reading now is, uh, if you heard of Tim Grover? Nope. He's, uh, he trained like Michael Jordan. and Okay. It's called Relentless. It's, uh, it's good. Another one, have you ever heard of Tim, um, David Goggins? No, I have not. Okay. It's called Can't Hurt Me. It's a good one, too. Okay. All right. Go. I got those. I'm going to look on your up. list. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Light. I, I want to move on to some a little bit more lighthearted questions. And then we're going to wrap it up with some rapid fire. Um, Taylor, you listed your pro, your favorite pro athlete as Messi. Um, I heard a rumor that he's going to sign with the Seattle Sounders. What are your thoughts on that? Wait, really? I didn't hear that. Yep. What? I thought no, was- I'm just kidding. I have no, oh. no, I was just kidding. Okay. Um, Seattle was my, of course, I'm from Seattle, like I said. So I, you know, I do everything I can to, yeah. to, you know, bring the spotlight on Seattle sports. If they can afford 800000 a week, good luck. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, Sydney, um, remember that one time that the, the Sounders beat LAFC in the Western Conference Finals? You remember that one time? LAFC, your favorite so, team, right? LAFC is, I, I do care for that team a lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. uh, I remember that. That was a, that was a fun game. That yeah, was, it was cool. It was cool. 3-1, I think that, that victory was like I, you know, you know, a couple you know, months ago. Who remembers the score, you know? Who remembers? All right. Exactly. And uh, Taylor, why do you hate the beach? Oh, well, actually, funny thing is, um, I'm at a beach house right now for my mom's 50th. <laughs> in Newport okay. um it's just like sand and like salt water and like the combination that is hate it on me and like you can even ask everyone on my team they always go to the beach all the time and I'm like no nope, I'm good I'm just gonna no. stay home <laughs> that's funny mountains you like the mountains more yeah or like a lake like okay a lake. so snowboarder at all you... yeah okay okay a bit. I usually go. like wakeboard or wake surf well, that you kind of have to touch a beach sometimes to get on a wakeboard. Yeah. I guess if you're not at a lake, there's not necessarily a beach, I guess. But okay. So rapid fire. Um, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to ask a question and then I'm going to give you about a second or two to think about it. And then I'm going to start with Sydney and then we'll go to Taylor and then Jay. Okay. So when I ask a question, give you a second and I'll say, ready, go. Sydney, Taylor, Jay, just give your answers as, you know, as fast as possible. Okay. Would you rather have T-Rex arms or flamingo legs? Flamingo legs and a heartbeat. Legs. Flamingo legs. Okay. If you could pick any kitchen utensil to replace your hands, what would you choose? Spatula. Fork. Spoon. What are you watching on Netflix right now? Or what is the last thing you watched on Netflix? Uh, I'm watching Avatar, The Last Airbender. Uh, I watch Vampire Diaries. Uh, My sister and I watched uh, Jurassic Fallen something. The last Jurassic World one. Dinosaurs. Is there another one out? After Jurassic Park. Another one comes out in 2021, okay. but this one was 2018. All right. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how good of a driver are you? 11. Mm. Um, I think I would say probably like a 6. Okay. I'd say 9, 9.5. Nine so we, we, we did pretty well with the bands. Yeah, I, I've been in the back of Taylor's car a few times, and uh, I don't know. I don't I'm know. Name which coach? Does she drive like one of our coaches? Sadie? 
Yeah. Uh, they're they're like they're they're like tied. I don't know because <laughs> Katie drives a little bit faster. But you're seeing Katie's tires on her car. They're like almost bald because she drives so fast. Mm. Yeah, I mean, corners, you like. both is you know not not the greatest. <laughs> All right, favorite favorite childhood TV show. Oh man, pass. I don't know. I don't know. Um. SpongeBob, is that what you said? Sorry, I cut out. Uh, my, yeah, mine was probably Spider Man. Okay. Okay. I don't know how young we're talking, but. Uh, it's childhood, right? Yeah. Name one of the seven dwarves. Uh, dopey. Uh, grumpy? Sneezy. Okay. All right. That's. I, I had to actually look those up. I'll admit it. I had to look up to make sure I knew exactly what they were so i wasn't stumped by that question when i asked it so that's good you just won the lottery what is your first purchase probably a couple new pairs of sneakers i knew that was coming maserati Maserati. oh wow uh you know what i'd probably build a training field okay at cpp going back to taylor you're mason mason field mason field i like it (laughs) Taylor, you're a three. As a, your, your teammate just says you're a three out of a 10 as a driver and you want to buy the most expensive car there is. Yeah, that is my dream car. So okay. I, I'm working towards that. <laughs> okay. Hopefully it's got a high safety rating. <laughs> it's got airbags probably. At least you, you would hope that probably. they put some. Thousand, they probably come with them, I think. I would hope. And, and a parachute to slow it down. Yeah. Dog or cat? Dog. 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 Okay. If you could be on any reality TV show right now, what would it be? Um, my 90 day fiance, but not as a fiance, just as like a spectator. <laughs> okay. I didn't see that coming. Tit. It's really good. It's a really good show. You see it coming. Could be the host. I, I think I should be the host, okay. honestly. All right. Only thing that's coming to my mind right now is like Jersey Shore. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the only real reality show I think I even really know about is like Survivor or something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I changed my answer. Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. What's the other one? It's like uh, uh, The Amazing Race. I want to be on that. that oh, you know like what? That. I switched mine to that. Yeah. That's a good one. I'll go, yeah. I'll go with Amazing switch. Race. I switched mine to that for sure. You guys need to watch uh, the world's toughest race. It's in Fiji. It's an eco challenge. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. It's absolutely insane. Even even crazier than like Tough Mudder. These these people go like seven hundred kilometers and without like, and they complete this in like one hundred and fifty hours. And it's everything. It's like you're paddling in the ocean, you're going through the jungle, you're like, it's crazy. No, I, I've i gone out and watched a family, um, a family member go do the Ironman where they do like, uh, like two miles of swimming, 100 miles of biking, and then like, tw- and then they run a marathon after that. Yeah. And it's like, no, thanks. That's oh the guy. So I had a, a triathlon crew in this race. So this guy's name's Iron Cowboy. Look him up. He's run 50 triathlons in 50 days in 50 states. So he runs one and then goes to the next state, does one the next day, the next day for 50 days. This no, guy, no, I don't even know if they came into the top like 15. He's like, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, yeah, I went golfing three days in a row like a couple of weeks ago. And the third day I was in so much pain and that as pathetic as that sounds, it, it, I was really, where do you get sore? It. My front hip. Gets I, you know, my, I throw out my neck and I'm a terrible, I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible at golfing. So, uh, you know, just to try and get that ball up in the air is that's comical. Yeah. Um, how would you rate your karaoke skills on a scale of one to Mariah Carey? 
probably like just before Mariah Carey. Okay, that's good. Just I don't know. I don't know. I've heard Sid yell. Hey, I I got pipes, you know. Yeah. With the best song, I you know I'm there. Okay, I'm what's there. the best? What's the best song? Oh, dude, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? She's singing national anthem. Next. There song. you go. National anthem done. First game. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll okay. see what happens. Just practice. I hear Katie can also sing the national anthem. Oh, she, for sure. She Katie told me. Too. Your assistant coach, Katie. I would not believe that, but no. <laughs> you've heard Haley. Katie tell, right? There's no way that girl sings. Um, I would probably say like a three. Not my strong suit. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably around there as well. All right. And uh and finally, I hope this is like the quickest answer you'll 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 say, but what are you doing on November third? Voting. Encouraging my team to vote. That's right. Perfect. That was good. That was quick and I like that. Perfect. Well, that was that was it. That's all I that that, that was the podcast. So uh, thank you for, for joining us and, uh, and, uh, you know, best of luck this, this fall with, uh, schoolwork and, and hopefully we'll, we're, uh, we're back to play sooner rather than later. Well, we appreciate it, Tyler. I really enjoyed this. It was good. For sure. Yeah. Thanks. All right. That'll do it for the first episode of the Broncast. I want to thank CPP women's soccer head coach Jay Mason, senior Taylor Scott, and junior Sydney Williams for joining me today. For new episodes of the Broncast each week, make sure to visit the official Cal Poly Pomona Athletics website at broncoathletics.com and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at our handle CPP Broncos. For everyone in the CPP Athletics Department, I am Tyler Lobey telling you to make it a great day and vote on November 3rd. As always, go Broncos.